Thank you, Amy. So yes, we are going to talk about wreath making today, which is always a very fun topic. Wreath making is tons of fun. And I am Jennifer Jensen, and we are going to, oops, make sure that I am sharing my sound as well for this. Just double check that. All right. Okay. Had a little music there. So, for those of you that may not be familiar with Extension, Extension is provided through the University of Idaho to help bring the knowledge and research from the university to you, wherever you may be. And we work on issues that focus on food production, 4-H youth development, horticulture, small farms, and many others, as you see here, nutrition, health, wellness, water, and forestry and natural resources. And we're just going to take a minute here with our next slide to see a short video on some of those programs. Get going here. Mm -hmm. University of Idaho Extension is helping Idahoans care for private and public land. Sorry about that. Through education to landowners, natural resource managers, and forest industries. From forest insects and diseases to wildland fire, stream protection, rangeland conservation, and logger education, UI Extension is guaranteeing the sustainability of our land for the future. Perfect. Sorry. Clicked too many times there. Okay, so I'm Jennifer Jensen, and I work as the Extension Educator in Bonner County, and I focus primarily on horticulture and small farm educational programs. And I'll go back real quickly here. That includes programs such as the Idaho Master Gardener Program, and as well as general gardening topics, and then also our Cultivating Success Small Acreage Programs for beginning or other small acreage farmers. And then I also help with our 4-H Youth Development Program. So before we get into too much more of the program, we always love to have input from the participants at our program. And so we have some poll questions that we would love for you to answer. Um, so we're just asking how many adults are attending the program, um, how many youth are attending the program, and is this your first time participating in a university extension class, workshop, activity, or event? And if, is this your first time participating in one of the UNI Together series classes? So if you just take a moment for those. Getting to know our audience is always helpful as we prepare for future programs. Okay, looks like perhaps most of you have had a chance to enter that poll. Okay, so let's move on then. Looks like most of you are, um, we have some adults, we have some youth today. And for most of you, this isn't your first you and I together or extension program. So great, welcome back to a, hopefully another excellent program. Okay, so as we get going today, we're gonna talk about making reads. So first of all, the supplies. A supply list was uh, emailed out if you had registered for the class. And so you want to have some good pruners. If you're working with children, adults may want to be the ones responsible for cutting the greens. 
You'll also want some spool floral wire. And so that's gonna be about 24 to 26 gauge is a good weight for the wire. I prefer a spool wire rather than individual pieces of floral wire to secure the branches on. It tends to just make a more secure wreath when you have that one continuous strand of wire going around. There's lots of different wreath frames to choose from um, and different types of greenery that can be used. And there's many different styles and sizes of wreaths. Uh, this wreath with the lights on and the red bow is about two feet in diameter. Um, and then the one with the pine cones is about 18 inches. And then the little one in the corner is just about eight inches or so. And that's what I'm going to work with today as we go through this class. So there's different types of wreath frames. There could be the grapevine wreath frames or a styrofoam wreath frame. But for making an evergreen wreath, a wire frame, also sometimes called a wire box frame, uh, tends to work well. There'll be three to four of the circular strands of heavy gauge wire in a circle and then with cross braces that um, connect those. These images are both of an eight inch wreath frame but from different companies and you'll notice one is wider than the other. Um, the one that's not um, as wide in terms of the depth of the frame there uh, has a larger opening in the middle, which sometimes is nice for a smaller frame. They are not flat. Sometimes you will see some of the wire frames that are completely flat, but most of the time they do have a curve to them and you want that curve to be facing up as in this um, photo here. So you want that to be up. It's going to help add a little bit of fullness to your wreath as you put them together. Now for the branches, for most of your wreaths, especially like a good eight inch size frame, you want your branch pieces to be about five or six inches in length. If you had a particularly larger frame and wanted it to uh, be a little bit more full or a little bit more shaggy around the edges, then you might choose a little bit longer of length pieces. But usually five to six inches in length is good. And for an eight inch frame, again, it depends on what type of greenery you're using, but I find about 35 pieces of the greenery, small pieces of the greenery, will fill that frame nicely. So if you are playing along with us today and you want to take some time to trim some of your branches that you have, you can do that while we go through. I'm going to just talk about some of the different types of native tree species that you might have in your area and that could be used for making a wreath. So Douglas fir is a common evergreen species. It's not a true fir. It is, um, but it has the fur-like foliage. So it's got the sort of soft tip to the needles. Um, and those needles are about three quarters to maybe an inch and a quarter inch um, in length. They do not, they will come off of the branch all the way around the stem. And they're often um, a nice, uh, almost sometimes a lighter green, sometimes they might even have a bluish tint to them um, or just a good um, standard green color to them. The pine cones, this pine cone in the photo um, is still held pretty tightly, but they are unique because they have these little bracts that stick out. Um, they almost uh, look like a little mouse tail or something um, out, sticking out under the scales there of the cone. All right, the next one is grand fur, and grand fur is 
also great for an evergreen wreath. It has more of a shiny dark green color to the needles on the top sides of the needles. On the other side, underside, you'll find two white lines that you can sort of see in that photo, the oval photo there, that's the underside of the needles. When they come off of the stem, they will come off on one side and the other. So a flat spray or there's in a flat plane there. So that can help identify those evergreen trees. I don't have a photo of the cones because the cones are usually up high on the tree and then will disintegrate on the tree prior to falling. They won't fall on the ground first. Another good evergreen, um, which is in more so in northern Idaho, but is the western hemlock. Now they have shorter needles to them, usually a nice dark green color. Um, and they're unique because they'll have some of the needles that are a little bit smaller than the other needles. Some of the needles will come off to the sides and be a little bit longer. And then you'll have little shorter needles that stick up more from the top of the branch. And also they are sort of lightish color on the undersides of the needles. They also, when you look at the tree growing, the very top leader of the tree will usually kind of curve down. It's a very flexible branch and so it will sort of curve down to the ground. Okay. Another nice one that might be used more so just as an accent with the other types of uh, evergreen trees. So it is often nice to have mixed species together in your wreath or at least have some of the other more unique species added for decoration. So something like the western red cedar could be used for that. It has a very soft, fine texture to it. It is a little bit floppy, so sometimes folks will like to have that arching uh, branches come off of their wreaths, and this is a good way to add it. It also has some nice little cones that you might find uh, still attached to some of those small branches. Now with the pines, we have several native pines to Idaho. We'll just talk about three here, but we have the ponderosa pine. Now for the ponderosa pine, if you look in that middle photo there, you can see those needles are over six inches in length. So they are quite long. And one way to help identify pines is to count the number of needles that are then grouped together. And in this case, we have three needles grouped together in that fascicle there. And so occasionally, as you're looking at the pines, you might find that not every single uh, bundle has the same amount. Some may have two by accident, but they're generally you'll have three to a bundle for the ponderosa pine. Because these are so long on your smaller reeds, they might not be the best species to use. I do like to include them though because the pine cones are nice accents to be added as decorations to the reeds. Another native pine is the lodgepole pine. Now this has two needles to the bundle and the needles themselves tend to be a little bit twisted and that's how it gets its name Pinus contorta because those needles are slightly contorted. They are smaller. This is a species that you're usually a little bit lighter in color, um, but you could still use them on your wreath. Uh, they can be a nice um, accent along with some other greenery. Their cones are also nice. However, they stay on the stem. So you're not gonna find the cones just sitting on the ground like you do the ponderosa pines, but also can be a nice decoration. And then last but certainly not least, we have our lodge, our excuse me, western white pine with our uh, state tree of Idaho. And they have about five needles they, in their bundles. So that's usually what you'll see, five. They um, have a nice sort of feathery texture to them, sometimes a little bit more of a grayish blue-green almost color to them. They also have nice pine cones. You can see this one's 
uh, pretty large. It's about six and a half inches in length. They are pretty sappy. So just keep that in mind um, if you choose to use them on your wreath and if that wreath is going to be going inside. Now, I didn't include any spruce as I was talking about them. We do have some native spruce that could also be used, um, but spruces have a pointy tip to their needles and can be a little bit pokey. So they certainly could be used, but um, just keep in mind, you might want to wear gloves if you're going to be handling those. Now, and I'll say with any of these species, they do tend to have some sap on them. It, partly what gives them that nice uh, evergreen smell, but it can also get on your hands and also on your work surface. So make sure you're creating your wreath in an area where you can easily clean up that sap. For your hands, if you choose not to wear gloves, um, using some hand sanitizer and a good wash afterwards will help clean up the sap as well. Okay. So let's get into making a wreath. Got some photos there, but I'm gonna switch over to my, um, uh, let's see, switch over to my camera here. And stop that. Okay. So hopefully you can set up your Zoom such that you can see this work surface here. And this is my eight inch frame um, and my spool wire that I'll be working with. I want to start by attaching that wire to the frame and I want to attach it at a point where that um, bracket it, um, holds the frame together. We're going to be tugging on this piece of wire. And so we don't want it to, if we were just to attach it to the side, it would slide around too much. So we want to make sure that we tie it securely around one of the braces there. So I'm gonna wrap it around several times just to make sure that we don't have it come off, sort of in a figure eight pattern. And then we've got that now attached at that point. It's nice and secure. I can tug on that and it's not going to come off. So I have my greenery pre-cut and I wanted to mention that oftentimes we're going to be using pieces that are from the tips of the branches that look nice, but you can certainly use parts farther down on the branch. This one, if you can see, it has a cut edge there as well as on the other end. You can still use this piece in your bundle to set it to the back. So you're going to want to take about five, four or five pieces, depending on what type of greenery. I have grand fur here in this bundle. And so it lays pretty flat. So I've got five pieces. I'm gonna place that where I have the wire attached and about an inch from the base of this bundle, I am going to wrap the wire all the way around the bundle and the whole frame. And I'm gonna pull that tight and I'm actually gonna do that twice to make sure that that's on there, nice and secure. Okay, so I can set that down and, and that wire is gonna hold that in place. I'm gonna um, create another bundle. Again, I've got some that are from the end of the branch, but some pieces that are down farther, they have that cut in there, but I'm gonna set that in the back so that we can't see that. I've got another five pieces there. And I want to cover up that wire that we just wrapped around and the cut ends of that first bundle. So I'm going to set this farther down on the wreath frame so that that wire and that end of that first bundle is covered up. I'm just going to take my wire now and again about an inch or so from the base of that second bundle, I'm going to wrap that around. I'm going to do that twice again, just to be sure. So this is just the process where you're going to keep working your bundle, keep working each bundle around 
the frame farther and farther, just moving your next bundle down a little bit more, depending on how full your bundles are and the size of your wreath frame, you may find that you need to position some a little bit more towards the outside or some a little bit more towards the inside. With this smaller frame, um, it's, it, and these bundles, it seems to be working that one bundle covers the whole frame. You just kind of want to make sure that the um, edge here is well covered. So we're going to work our way around. And you want to keep going with this. And I think we'll do a couple more as we go around here. I want to make sure we have time for questions and if there are any questions, feel free to put those in the chat and we can help answer those. And you can see, especially when you have your bundles already laid out together, that it can go relatively quickly. Um, if you are going to be using different species um, in your bundle, um, for instance, maybe on this one, I want to add a little bit of that white pine. So I've got a, a white pine branch there. I'll just add that to it. Um, if you only know that you have a limited supply of the white pine, then you might choose to at make your bundles, set them aside, just all, um, you know, four or five pieces on your table so that you know what you, um, that you have that. See that. Um, and then you can uh, just keep going with that. I am going to switch over to another wreath that, um, I started earlier today. Now this one is um, just uh, the Douglas fir. And so this one you can see, it's almost all done. You can also see that with this fluffy Douglas fir, um, you can hardly even see the middle portion of the wreath there. But I'm almost done. I just need to add one more bundle to it. So what I want to do, this is my first bundle that I'm holding on to here. I want to pull that back out of the way. And sometimes it can be helpful to have somebody else help you with it. But after you've done it once or twice, you'll easily get the hang of it. I'm tucking my final bundle in underneath. And then as I hold this one back still, so I'm still holding this back, I'm going to wrap that wire around that final bundle. And again, I'm gonna wrap it around twice and pull it tight. And now you're not able to see where that last bundle went in. So you really can't tell where the wreath starts and ends. To finish off the wreath, you do want to then cut your wire. Again, that might be something an adult would do. And you want to, again, attach it to a cross brace um, so that it's not going to become too loose and unravel and loosen up and let your grains fall out. So along that cross brace, I'm gonna wrap this through making sure that's tight there. Do it a few times there. So we know it's not gonna come undone. And then you've got your wreath. You can decide which part of the wreath looks like maybe it should be the top or the bottom. And then with these wire frames, you can either hang it directly from the frame itself on a hook, or you can add a loop of wire here to use for hanging. All right. And 
there and you can also take some time to decorate it so either with a um, we've got a ponderosa pine cone or a douglas fir pine cone here you can take that and for this i do cut uh, about a foot long piece of the wire and i'm going to wrap it around the base of the pine cone so it's about in the middle of the wire and I want to try to tuck it in um, as much as possible, just so that it's less visible, so that you're not actually seeing that wire. And then from there, as you wrap it around on your wreath, again, you want to kind of weave it in between the branches so that you're not gonna force them down. The idea is just to try to make that wire invisible so that you're not noticing it right away. And twist that around. I'm just um, twisting that like this in the back. And then again, we'll wrap it around the, the ends of it around the frame just to make it a little more secure. And got a nice pine cone on your wreath. I'm going to switch back to my slides here. Let's see if I... okay. All right. You can decorate, of course, with some beautiful ribbon, ornaments, or um, either dried or artificial berries or flowers. They all make nice decorations. There's endless possibilities. And with anything that you want to attach, the dried berries or artificial berries may be on a stem that you can just tuck into the wreath itself. Otherwise, tying the wire to the ribbon or to flowers and then carefully wrapping it around the wreath frame and making it snug. Works well. Like I said, it can be a little bit messy. Inevitably, you're going to have some needles that you'll need to sweep or vacuum up. Your hands may have some sap on them, so a little hand sanitizer, an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, and a good washing um, will help with that. So I will say thank you. Mm -hmm.